so you protected yourself. You put so much protection on you, God can't even get to you. You put so much protection on you that it's hard now for you even to hear. You got so much protection you can't even see beyond the hurt. Well, God bless you. And yes, this is Decision Time. My name is Elder Ernest Dunn, and I have the distinct pleasure of sharing the Word of God with the congregation on today. And the message title is My Protection Plan. I pray that you will stay tuned. Don't change that dial because the Word of God is up next. If you have Matthew 13 and 15, say amen. amen. What does it say, Elder Corey? For this people's heart is waxed gross. Now notice what Jesus is saying in response to the disciples. He says, this people's heart is waxed gross. In other words, it has become hardened. It's hard to reach them. It's difficult now to get my word across to them. Uh-huh. And their ears are dull of hearing. They're here, but they actually cannot hear. Their ears are dull. Uh-huh. And their eyes, they have closed. Their eyes, they have closed. They have willingly closed their eyes. Uh-huh. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes. Now he said, at any time. Notice what Jesus said. He said, at any time. Should they open their eyes, they would be able to see. At any time. Uh-huh. And hear with their ears. And then they would be able to hear with their ears. Uh-huh. And should understand with their hearts. And then they would understand with their hearts. Should they open their eyes at any time, they would be able to see. He begins there. Should their eyes open, they would be able to see. Then their ears would be opened, and then they would understand with their heart. Is that what he said? All right, let's keep reading. And should be converted... And then they would be converted. Uh huh. And I should heal them. And then he said, I should heal them. If they would open their eyes, then their ears would be opened, and then they would understand. And he said, I should heal them. I'm going to talk to you today about my protection plan. All right. Say that with me, my, my protection, protection plan. plan. Some time ago, um, I didn't know this, but the Lord was uh, speaking to me and I didn't know it. Perhaps my eyes were closed, my ears were dull. But my phone is right here. You see this, this is my phone. And this is my second phone, okay? Because my first phone was damaged. I dropped my phone on the parking lot, probably here, and it, and it cracked the screen. And I didn't have anything on my phone. I didn't have uh, all these protective devices, if you will. And I said, I ain't gonna never let that happen to me again. Y'all know how much these phones cost, right? Truly, truly. Mm -hmm. And that hurt. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am never going to let that happen again. So I went to the store. And I got all these protective devices to put on my phone. So it wouldn't happen again. So I got something that you almost have to pry the phone out of. Y'all got them. I see y'all with them. I'm just reminding you of what you already have. So it covers the entire phone, but then they have what's called a screen protector. And they advertise it as such that you could take a hammer to your screen. Now, don't try it. They said it. I didn't say it. 
They, they advertise it as such as that you could take a, a hammer to your screen and it won't break because of the screen protector. So I was confident in what they sold me on, my protection plan. So over a period of time, I had that screen protector on my phone so much until it got dirty and it got extremely dirty. And my family, my wife, my son and daughter encouraged me repeatedly to replace the screen protection on my phone. And I said, no, it's all right, it's all right. So time went on and on and on until that screen protection got so dirty that I couldn't even read. Hold on. Now that's dirty, ain't it? That's pretty dirty. This is why my dear wife said, get another one. But I didn't listen. You're right, Mother Taylor. It's in the book. I did not listen. So I continued until one day I just absolutely couldn't read anything that was coming on my phone. Wow. That's how dirty that screen protector was. This is the message I wanted to share with you on today. Is that the Lord showed me he said, the thing that is protecting you is now keeping you from getting the message. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. The thing that is protecting you is the same thing that is preventing you from getting the message. Wow. So I had to peel off that screen protector. And when I peeled it off, Jeffrey said, you got a new phone, Dad? <laughs> I said, no, I just took the protector off. So we're going to talk about my protection plan. Because oftentimes, we've been hurt. Oftentimes, we've been damaged. Oftentimes, we have been abused and we said to ourselves, I will never I will never ever let that happen to me again we made a vow to ourselves. oh you're in here you made a vow to yourself I won't ever as long as I'm black you know you said it Right. Yes, sir. You're in the house. I won't ever let a person do that to me again. So you protected yourself. You put so much protection on you, God can't even get to you. You put so much protection on you that it's hard now for you even to hear. You got so much protection you can't even see beyond the hurt. And that hurt was 25 years ago. But that, that, that screen protector is there. Because now we view everything through the lens of what we're protected by. So what God has to do is he has to get to us in a unique way. Because he, he can't get through trying to get our attention. You know, they sell protection plans. As soon as you got, get to that checkout, they say, you know, for three years, for an additional $39.99, anything that happens to this, we'll replace it. And the enemy is selling protection plans to the people of God just to keep us out of God's will. Out. Wow. He satisfies us with things just so that we think we're doing what God said. But we're far, far, far away. 
go with me to Genesis, the 20th chapter. And we're going to deal with Abraham. Now, Abraham is, is proclaimed and heralded as one who was a man of great faith. All throughout scripture, you hear of Abraham. The Jews refer to him as being the children of Abraham. Jesus used Abraham in his teachings. If you remember the, the, uh, the parable of the rich man and the beggar, he talked about the beggar resting in the bosom of Abraham. Paul spoke of Abraham. We use the famous scripture when it comes to Abraham to say that he believed God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. We are reminded of Abraham's journey from the land that God told him to leave in Hebrews 11th chapter. And the scripture says that Abraham went out not knowing where he would go. And Abraham is just proclaimed as this great man of faith. But Abraham had a couple flaws because he didn't really totally trust God as we give him credit for. Let me tell you the first, first place that he didn't do it. God told him to leave his family. But Abraham took Lot with him. So he didn't completely obey God. Because he took part of what God told him to leave with him. And he could only go so far before he had to separate from Lot. Before God could bless him further. That's a message right there. You must obey God completely. completely. Not halfway. Well, God said, this is what um, uh, Saul made the mistake of. Sparing some of the best. Yes. When God said, destroy everything. everything. You have to be careful. God is God. Nobody can take his place. What he said to do, he meant that. Yes. Not your opinion included. So that was the first mistake that Abraham made. The second mistake is that when a famine entered the land, and this happened twice, the scripture says in the 12th chapter of Genesis that Abraham sojourned or went south to Egypt. And when he went there, he lied. And the reason why Abraham lied, he lied to protect himself. He put his wife on the line, as a matter of fact. He said, when we get there, tell them we're brother and sister. Don't tell them we're married, because they're going to kill me. Now, why would Abraham do that? The scripture doesn't completely reveal why he had such a lack of faith. But what we do know when the scripture does say that he did that is that he did not trust God fully. There was a part of him that he had reserved for his own protection that God could not get through. So that happened in the 12th chapter of Genesis, and now it happens again in the 20th chapter. So we're going to read the first two verses there. What does it say? And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country uh -huh. and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur uh -huh. and sojourned in Gerar. Uh -huh. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife. Now, this is the second time this happened again in the 12th chapter, as I just mentioned. But he says again to his wife, what? She is my sister. He says she is my sister. Uh -huh. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. So the king of that land, a Gentile king, sent and took Abraham's wife wow. at Abraham's permission. Oh my God. Just so that he could protect mm -hmm. himself. Yeah. Now the amazing thing about this is that in the 18th chapter and then the 19th chapter, Abraham had such sweet fellowship with God. As a matter of fact, in uh, Genesis 18 and 1, the scripture says that the Lord appeared to him at his tent. And he had fellowship with him, not only with him, but with Sarah as well. And when they finished communion, 
when they finished dinner, when they finished their fellowship, then the Lord said, shall I not hide from my friend what I'm about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah? So, so Abraham had fellowship with the Lord. Hear me. He had fellowship with the Lord, and then the Lord revealed unto him something that he didn't tell everybody. So this is the 18th chapter of Genesis, and then this is the 19th chapter. And then Abraham stands as an intercessor in the face of God on behalf of Lot and his family. I'm describing to you how close Abraham was to God. But as soon as that scenario was over, Abraham left. And as, as close as he was to God, now God didn't tell him nothing. All right. See, you can be really close to God today. And tomorrow you can be out of his will. Not because God left, but because you did. You ought not get so confident. Take heed, those of you who think you're standing. Lest you fall. Don't get so confident in how well things are going now. Because you don't know what next week looks like. So Abraham had this very tight, if I could use that word relationship with God yeah. right, right. but the same position that Lot was in Abraham now finds himself in That's it. That's it. it's amazing how you can pray for somebody and the same prayer that you prayed for them now you need <laughs> don't get so high minded because you're an elder so high minded because God has used you in this moment in this hour because it might not be two days later when you need the same prayer that you prayed for somebody else and that's exactly the place that Abraham was in right now he was so close but now he was so far while he believed God, mm -hmm. on yesterday, today, he had doubts. Mm -hmm. Everything was fine when he was dealing with Lot. But when it hit his own house, he lied. He lied to protect himself because something was going on in him that he had not given God access to. Something was going on in him that God had to deal with. See, uh, Naaman, you remember Naaman? The scripture says that he was a captain. The scripture says that he was a mighty man of valor. The scripture says that God used him to deliver in Syria. But then the scripture says, but he was a leper. See, we, we think of all the great things about ourselves, All the good things you put on your resume. Right, right. But we leave off of everything else. Right. Left out the, yeah. mm -hmm. the drama. Where the drama at? Yeah. Think about it. How close Abraham was. But now he found himself as a liar in God's presence. Only to protect himself. So, so, so God could not speak to Abraham. He had to speak to the Gentile king. He appeared to Abimelech in a dream. And he said, don't touch Sarah. Wow. That's right. <laughs> so here this unbeliever comes to Abraham. A father of, of many nations. 
and say, why have you cursed us? See, God has more than one way of getting, getting his message to you. If you don't hear it in this house, God has a way of reaching you out there. You say, I don't want to hear that. You say, you close your ears. You shut your eyes. Your heart has come dull. God still has a way to get a hold of you. You've been broken, he understands. You've been abused, he understands. But he says, as he said in Matthew, the 13th chapter, if they would just open their eyes. He said, I'll heal them. They should be healed. Mm -hmm. But their, their eyes are closed because they don't want to hear no more remedies. They don't want to hear no more help. I've heard it all. When you're going through and everybody's trying to help you, you get tired of hearing solutions. But God is looking for our best interests. That's right. And he does so in such a unique fashion. He'll speak to you and you say, what's that God? You might not hear me. Some of y'all so sleepy, you making me sleepy. Listen, you may not hear this message today, but when God is trying to get your attention, it's not, it's not restricted to his church house. No, no, don't confuse it. When you don't hear the preacher, when you don't hear the Sunday school teacher, when you don't hear the pastor, when you turn the television off where the word is going forth, when you refuse to read the word, he has another way of showing you the same message. And it may not be as pleasant had you listened initially. But the amazing thing about it is that with, 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 with all that God was doing for Abraham, with all that God had prepared for him and, and was doing in him, yet he found himself where he couldn't hear him. Yet he found himself distant while he was just yet so close. God don't always speak to you. Can I give you a hint to way of, of learning the will of God? Sometimes he don't always tell you. But he tells somebody to tell you. <laughs> and quite often the person he tells, uh, tells to tell us we don't like. Oh, I know I'm in the house. The person that is telling you what you need to hear is the person you have a problem with. God has put an answer to your problem and someone that you don't get along with. And you don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear. That's why you shouldn't be worried about who's preaching today. Come on, sir. Say that. Because God will speak through whomever will yield himself to him and become a vessel for the master's use. Who's on for the day? Nah, I'll be back next week. You just missed your blessing. See, when God spoke through Elijah the prophet, Naaman had a problem because he wouldn't even come to the door. He sent a message. He sent a message and that irritated Naaman to no end. You know why? Because he was blinded by who he was. He was blinded by the fact that he was a captain. He was blinded by the fact that God used him. He was blinded, and when the message said to him what to do, oh, you must be crazy. 
but his healing was in following those instructions. So the word to you on today and to me is that what is protecting you from getting the message? Let me tell you what protects us, our possessions. Our possessions protect us from hearing God's message. Get Revelations 3 and 17. Let me tell you another thing that protects us from getting God's message is our status. We are so concerned of who we are than who God is. Another protection that prevents us from getting God's message is our relationships. Wow. Mm -hmm. Who you're associated with. Revelations 3 and 17, what does it say? Because thou sayest, I am rich. Notice this. He says to the church of which is churches is Laodicea. Mm -hmm. This is the church of Laodicea. And he says, you have said that I am what? Rich. You said I'm rich. And I'm what? Increased with goods. And I'm increased with goods. Uh-huh. And have need of and nothing. And I don't have need of nothing. This is what you said. But what did he say? And knowest not that thou art wretched. But he said, but you don't know that you are wretched. <laughs> and miserable. And miserable. You're trying to make everyone believe you happy. And you know you're miserable. Because you have protected yourself. No one can get to you, including God. And you, you've masked, you, 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 you've put on with, with, with a facade that you're happy, mm -hmm. and you know you're not. So what is it for you? What is your protection plan? What are you guarding yourself against? The hurt, the abuse, the damage, the rejection. What is it that you don't want to feel again? Because certainly we all remember how a certain experience made us feel. And we made a vow in our mind, in our hearts, and we said, I'll never do that again. But at the same time, we have prevented God from healing that area in our life. So we must uncover that area so that we may be healed. I pray that you would do so. Perhaps hearing this again and seeing it again will help you identify those areas in your life. You can do so at our website, www.israelitekojic.org or our YouTube channel, Decision Time Enterprises. I encourage you to go to either place, share it with a friend. Now in the words of our pastor, remember, you have a miracle in your mouth. God bless you.